What's up guys, my name is Hutch and I make videos and put them on the internet. What happened? <laughs> Your cue. <laughs> oh, and this is Pine Park Movie Talk. <laughs> All right, so last week we discussed my five favorite film directors to watch while high. There will be a link to that in the description of this video. I'd highly recommend checking that out before you watch this video. But for the topic this week, since Doctor Strange 2 is releasing, uh, I figured it would be a good time to discuss my five favorite comic book films to watch while high with my best friend and co-sponsor person, co-host. Uh, Hector Rodriguez. What's up, buddy? I am doing great. What's up with you? I'm doing great as well. You've been smoking weed since 9.30? 9.30? It was like a good six hour session of just constantly smoking. It's been pretty good. You, these guys want me to like get high like when I do these episodes and I can't, I just can't do it. I cannot function. You don't know that until you give it a shot. I think the, the creative juices will be flowing and you'd be on so much autopilot that all of the knowledge that you know about movies would just like flow like a gentle stream no into the I, camera i think i would freeze up i would get very frightened mm -hmm. and uncomfortable to be i think that we should give it a shot so i asked you to uh come up with a list of five comic book films that you like to watch while high you yep. you say that you can remember them off the top of your i head. can yeah okay so why don't you do you give you, you give me one and then i'll give you one okay and then we can bounce off each other so give me one comic book film that you like to watch while high um, my favorite one is also one of your favorites, which is uh, Spider-Verse, um, Into the Multiverse, or Spidey, into Spider, the, into, into, the spider into, into the Spider-Verse, yeah. uh, because, you know, Mal Morales, you know, graffiti writer, and it, like, the whole opening of it is about, you know, sticker, you know, graffiti, and, you know, that, that sort of thing had yeah. this impact, not impact on me, and then he's also wearing the shoes that I like to wear, the same way that I like to wear the shoes, like, it, you know, it, it made me like it. And then obviously like all the effects and the, the, the cartoon, the art, I appreciated it even more. The music. Yeah, oh, the music, the, yeah. The soundtrack to that is so fucking good. All right, the first one on my list uh, is topical, is Doctor Strange. Uh, it's visually such a treat to watch that movie. It's so obviously influenced by Inception, mm -hmm. which is of course a mind fuck in itself. And you know, an another wonderful film to watch while high but you know it's i don't think it's the best mcu film but it's a lot of fun yeah. to watch when you're in the right state oh, of yeah. mind and anything with tilda swinton who plays the ancient one yep she's just like this really weird actor who loves these weird roles and she always does such a good job with them so, so good yeah she's so good uh for me another one uh or the next one is guardians of the galaxy 2. Mm -hmm. and i i i Wanted to say one and two, but I just said, you know what, it's gonna, it's gonna have to be number two. One of the best openings, like as soon as Groot finds the, you know, the cable to where it needs to go and the music just fucking hits you mm -hmm. and just visually you're just like lost in the amount of like complex fights that are happening all at once and then, you know, sort of throwing the character's personality into each and every single one of those mm -hmm. little uh, blips that they have on camera. Just like, it was like so beautifully composed that it was just like a, almost like a perfect, like mood 15 or what, two minutes of just fucking awesome. You know, um, I, I did a tier list for comic book films recently and you would be surprised how many people in uh, on social media were trying to make the case that Guardians 2 was a mid film. Like it actually quite, what do you think by the way? You think mid? it's a mid film? Wow. Okay, so he thinks it's, yeah, that, this is like a common thing that people think, but uh, that was not my experience with that film. I thought I had so much fun with it. I saw it with Mike and May and my and my fiance, mm -hmm. and I have never heard Esme laugh as hard as she laughed yeah. in that film. Yeah, and, uh, uh, mid. And, yeah, the whistling like that was like the whole thing was funny. So my second film that I picked for this list is a, a late '90s Batman film called Batman Forever, mm. which is definitely not the best Batman movie but it's so goofy and over the top that if you're in that state of mind, I think it lines up yeah. very, very well. And then you, you of course have Jim Carrey, who at the time was in like the peak of his career, uh, delivering a very interesting take on Riddler that is quite yeah. different from the most, most recent Riddler. Way, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which we'll talk about that in an in upcoming episode. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, I just had such a fun time watching that as a movie, uh, watching that movie as a kid. I, that was probably like one of the most excited I had ever been to go see it 
in theaters. And if you go back and watch it now, of course you're watching it from the perspective of like a 30, 38 year old mm -hmm. dude. So it's a little bit different, but it's just a really fun over the top Batman film. Yeah. That's, that's why I like it. Uh, for me, the next one is going to have to be Logan. Uh, just the amount of emotion that you get to see like one of your favorite characters just ever for me. Uh, sort of not deteriorate, but see his character sort of dwindle into just like, you know, it's time for me to say goodbye. Not just him, Professor X too. Professor X also, yeah. yeah. I, 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 it, it's so impactful. I forgot about Professor X in, in, in that scenario. That one, I think it, it did a really good job at sort of uh, keeping it interesting and introducing a new character that made you say, whoa, that's cool, which obviously the, the little girl, I don't remember her name. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think, I think definitely Logan just. It had everything, right? Everything that I would have liked to have seen. Like, uh, it, it has imagination. Uh, it has like different, different stages of a character you've been following along since you were literally 13 years old. I was 13 years old, right? Mm -hmm. And I knew about like the, the, the that. So being 42, and I may, I may be off a couple of years, but just having this character be my favorite because of what he represents, just this badass dude. Yeah. Um, yeah, it made me, made me. Logan, Logan is an S plus movie, mm -hmm. I would say for sure. It's it's in like the my, there's like seven comic book films that to me are just the best of the best. And and some days I think Logan is probably my favorite. The next movie on my list is Man of Steel, mm -hmm. which I believe came out in 2014 or 2013. Man of Steel. Dire Man of Steel, yeah. directed by uh, Zack Snyder. Loved loved it. Are we allowed to talk about powerful hallucinogens on this channel? Yeah, of course. So once upon a time, I used to really dabble with uh, LSD. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was one movie that I managed to watch basically every time I was tripping balls on LSD. So you remember so, to go back and watch that? It was just this like compulsion that I had every time it kicked in. Yeah. I just really wanted to watch that film. Cause like whenever I would hallucinate and, and take this drug, watching movies felt like so much more immersive than mm -hmm. at any other point. I feel like I'm in the movie. Yeah. And what better, you know, that's like a childhood fantasy of being Superman. So yeah. to this day, like I can't, like I'm compromised when so it comes good. to Man of Steel. Like I yeah. can't tell you if it's actually a good movie or if I'm just really fond of it because Same. I was ripping my fucking face off every time I watched oh, it. Oh, I, I, I think you're, it's one of my favorites too. Um, and I would put it up there also, but I'm not, I, I just chose something else. Uh, it is Batman. Um, the uh, Tim Burton original? No. Or the Adam no. West? No. It's Batman a, Begins? No, the, 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 Dark the latest one. The Dark, Not the Dark Knight. No, the Dark Knight. Not you just the said the Batman. latest one. No, the, the latest good one. Yeah. <laughs> right, Batman The Dark Knight uh, just, it, it, it made me a mega fan of Batman, which I wasn't before up until this point. Yeah, and, and when he was announced too, when Heath Ledger was announced as Joker, mm -hmm. He was most, at that point, most known for like these sort of like tween comedies yeah. or like 10 Things I Hate About You and A Knight's Tale. Fucking and, one uh, of my favorite, Shannon So Salmon as, as the, as the, as the, as the uh, princess. Fucking amazing. I watched that movie so many times. Loved it. I don't know who that person is, but, yeah. but, but when, when, when he was first announced as, as being cast in the role of Joker, mm -hmm. there was a huge backlash. A lot of people didn't have faith. Uh, uh, but as soon as like that first, they released one image of him in full makeup mm -hmm. and that shut everybody up. Like all they had to do is just see an image of him smiling. And people yeah. were like, oh, I'm kind of interested. Yeah. And then of course, you know, the fact that he died two weeks before the movie came out. Made, oh my God. Like it, 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 I saw, I'll, I'll never forget Jeez. that experience of seeing that movie in theater. I'll never forget that. We went on it. This was back when you had to go at like midnight on Thursday if you wanted to see it early. And I, I did that with like two towers. I did that with like dozens and dozens of movies. Mm -hmm. But this movie, I mean, the crowd was like, as soon as he delivers that first line, you mm -hmm. know, whatever it doesn't kill you makes you stranger and he takes off his mask. The whole crowd gave him a standing ovation. Everybody was just, their jaw just hit the floor. I mean, it's just truly one of the most iconic performances ever. Amazing, so. yeah. All right, so the next movie on my list is uh, Thor Ragnarok, directed by uh, Taika Waititi. Um, the first two Thor films, the first one was directed by Kenneth Branagh, who is, uh, uh, you know, he's a very talented actor, very talented filmmaker. I, th I really liked the first one. The second one didn't get received as well, um, but they weren't super like comedic films. Mm -hmm. like, were there, you know, there, there was some comedy. The first one's the one with uh, um, the, uh, what's her name? 
Uh, oh, Natalie Portman? Natalie Portman, right? Yeah, so they brought in Taika Waititi, mm -hmm. who who was already like really established, but not for like big block, blockbuster. He, he had done like Hunt for the Wilder People and Eagle vs. Shark and Joe. I think Jojo Rabbit maybe came after that. I don't know if you ever saw Jojo Rabbit. I did. That's another really good one. But he's got this uh, really like over the top comedic style. And Ragnarok to me is one, you know, is easily the funniest MCU film. Mm -hmm. And and I'm, I'm so incredibly hyped for Thor Love and Thunder, but um, I love everything about it. It's colorful, it's fun, it captures, it really captures the vibe of like Saturday morning cartoon, mm -hmm. which is what I'm like, that's like sometimes when I go to see a comic book film, that's what I want to see. Sometimes I want it to be dark and gritty like the Batman. Yeah. And then sometimes I'm just ready to just like, yeah. you know, let's have some fun and yeah. you know, take me on whatever journey you want to take me on. The Coliseum scene where they have this like incredibly comedic exchange between Hulk and him. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's like you see him with his, you know, short hair and it's not the traditional, you know, wavies, right? Uh, yeah. I, I thought every, one of my favorites so much so that I said, if he bring, if he says that one, then I'm going to say the next one, which is Deadpool. Deadpool, wow. The intro itself, the way that they composed the sort of camera. The whole action sequence yeah, on, the, on, yeah. the, on the freeway. On you, the free you, you know that they shot, like that's, that's how they pitched the studio mm -hmm. to get that film made, is they filmed like a, like a sort of like a mock-up version of that, and then they presented it to the studio, and I think the studio turned them down, and then they leaked it mm -hmm. online. That spread like wildfire went viral mm -hmm. and was so popular that I think I could be getting the story wrong, but I think this is what I read that happened. I would love it, was, it if that was a true story. They purposefully leaked it so they could generate hype to convince yeah. the studio to, to make the movie, and then it ended up being like at the time the most successful R-rated film of all time. It grossed over a billion dollars mm -hmm. worldwide yeah. and paved the way for I think Logan, which was, that was the first R-rated yeah. take on um, on Wolverine. We had seen. Yeah. Let's 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 bang out this last one. Mm -hmm. My. Uh, so this is not the best comic book film. I'm just gonna give that disclaimer right now. Mm. But if you're smoking a little bud, I think The Amazing Spider-Man Spider, Spider -Man is a lot of fun to watch. And I will say this, I think it, it features the best web-slinging sequences in uh, of, of all the Spider-Men. And which one is gotten. that one? The Amazing Spider-Man is the one with Andrew Garfield. Okay. So there was Amazing Spider-Man 1, which I think was like, people liked it, but they didn't love it. And then Amazing Spider-Man 2, which people did not love. But there are serious problems with that movie. But it's a very colorful kind of uh, uh, fun take on the actual web slinging. So the action sequences, I think, are like top notch. The mm -hmm. villains in the second one are pretty lackluster. But uh, even though it's not the best comic book film, I think it is a ton of fun to watch if you're, if you're getting hot. Yeah. Yeah. We did it, bud. I'm, I'm honestly impressed that you were able to rattle off your five yeah. movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me the truth. Did you did you think of them right now on the spot? Yes. Or did you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I felt bad about it because you've been telling me for like a week. It's like, yo, think about this shit. I'm like, yeah, I will, I will, I will. But I just knew, like, I, I, I love it so much. I just knew that I was going to be able to rattle it off. I even, I thought that I had another round going. And mm -hmm. I was just about to to say like my next one, so <laughs> I'm glad that I'm glad that I was like, there's no the way this motherfucker remembered that. But did, right. did, did, that, did I not come off as prepared? Because again, you I, did you did very well. I, mean, I am impressed. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys, that has been episode three of Pine Park Movie Talk. Thank you so much for coming on, Hector. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you like the video, click like. If you like Pine Park and you don't want to miss any of the content, click subscribe. Click the bell icon. Uh, and until next week, stay frosty out there and uh, make good decisions. Or don't. It is America.